This episode brought to you by MeepleRealty.com, your source for high-quality custom board game inserts. Meeple Realty, think inside the box. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're bringing you a card close-up of Mansions of Madness. We're going to take a look at every single item and investigator that comes with the base game of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. That's pretty much it, so without anything else, let's get right into the video and see what comes with this game. All right, so the first item here is the 18 caliber Derringer. It is a firearm, ranged obviously, two base damage. No gal should be out on the town without a bit of protection. Here's the 38 caliber revolver. It is a firearm, range attack, three base damage, a trusty service piece for any member of the armed forces. Here we've got a 45 caliber automatic. A firearm range attack, four base damage. Being a detective can be a dangerous career, but these babies will see you through. Here we've got a two by four, two base damage. It's a melee weapon, heavy weapon. Action, you brace the door with the board, flip this card and place it against the door in your space. So if you flip the card over, the door is reinforced with a board. Treat this card as a barricade that blocks the door it is placed against. When an investigator picks up this card or moves this card away from the door, blocks, flip this card, and then it becomes the heavy weapon again. Next, we've got the Arcane Manuscripts. It's a tome. Roll one additional die while resolving a lore test. Here we've got the Axe. It is a heavy weapon, melee weapon, and two base damage. You may suffer two face down hard to convert all investigation symbols to uh, success symbols while attacking with this card. Then we've got the bandages. As an action, discard up to two face down damage, then discard this card. Here we've got the brass knuckles. Roll two additional dice while attacking unarmed. That's one of my favorites right there. We've got the bull's eye lantern. It's a light source, and as an action, another investigator within range becomes dazed. So that's kind of an interesting one right there got candles also a light source you may discard this card to convert all investigation symbols to success symbols while casting a spell and the carbine or carbine rifle five base damage it's a firearm so ranged attack you cannot attack a monster in your space with this card so you got to make sure you keep at least one space away here we've got the crowbar it's a heavy weapon with two base damage a hefty tool for getting the job done right then we've got dynamite this as an action you light the fuse and toss the explosive flip this card and place it in a space within range flip it over the fuse is only so long it would be wise to run at the end of the investigator phase each investigator in the space or an adjacent space suffers eight damage and each monster in those spaces suffers 10 damage then discard this card so that is a very powerful tool right there here we've got the Elder Sign Pendant. Uh, roll one additional die while evading a monster. And the Elder Ward, very similar. Roll one additional die while a monster is attacking you. Then we've got the Fire Extinguisher, which can be used as a heavy weapon or with, with two base damage or as an action, discard all fire in your space and adjacent spaces. We've got the Flare Gun. As an action, place fire in a space within range. Each monster in that space suffers two damage. Then flip this card. You have only one more shell remaining. You had better make it count. And basically you have the exact same thing. It's just that you get two total actions with the flare gun. The Holy Cross, roll one additional die while resolving a will test. Holy Water. Discard one horror and become focused, then discard this card. So it's a one use card. And then you got the kerosene lantern, which is a light source for as long as you have it, or you can discard the card to convert all investigation symbols to success symbols while attacking unarmed. And oh, so we've got the King James Bible, which is a tome. You or another investigator within range may discard one face down horror. Here we've got the knife a uh, bladed weapon with one base damage it can cut many things including monsters here we've got the lead pipe a heavy weapon with one base damage a bloodied pipe was found at the scene of the crime this the, the cause of death is still unknown here we've got the lucky cigarette case 
its equipment once per round you may convert an investigation symbol to a success symbol followed by the lucky rabbit's foot once per round you may reroll one die and here's the machete a bladed weapon with two base damage although more commonly used as a tool for cutting vegetation it will do well against the horrors you now face here is the magnifying glass Roll one additional die while resolving an observation test. And the meat cleaver, it's a bladed weapon with two base damage. You may suffer two face down hard to convert all investigation symbols to success symbols while attacking with this card. I'm a big fan of this and the, um, there's another one that we went through a minute ago that was similar to that. The ax has this uh, same kind of ability. Uh, I just kind of like the idea that you, you go so crazy with it that it causes you to be horrified at your own actions, but at the same time, you're more effective. Uh, the medical textbook is next with, uh, it gives you an action. You or another investigator within range may discard one face down damage. Here we've got the ritual dagger, one base damage, bladed weapon, roll one additional die while casting a spell. Here we've got sedatives. At the start of your turn, you may discard three damage and three horror. If you do, discard this card and end your turn. Sledgehammer. This is another one with that same ability. Uh, it's a heavy weapon with two base damage. You may suffer two face down damage this time instead of horror to uh, convert all investigation symbols to success symbols while attacking with this card. Here we've got the pickaxe, three base damage, heavy weapon. With a single hard swing, the tool's head pierces deeply into even the hardest materials. Here we've got the pocket watch. You may perform one additional puzzle step while attempting a puzzle. And the shotgun, everybody's favorite. It's a firearm with six base damage. You cannot attack a monster that is more than one space away with this card. The shovel, one base damage heavy weapon. Ding holes is just one of its many uses. Here we've got the Tommy gun. Four base damage. Once per round, you may reroll all of your dice while attacking with this card. Torch, one base damage, heavy weapon, and a light source. When an investigator drops this card, place fire in the space. And we've got whiskey. As an action, discard up to two face down hard, then flip this card, at which point it becomes a bladed weapon. You smash the bottle, it is crude, but it will make a good enough weapon if you get into trouble. One base damage, bladed weapon. And finally, the wrench. One base damage, heavy weapon. Arkham's got a lot of problems, I'm here to fix them. All right, next up, let's take a look at the unique items in the game. Here we got a brass key. As you hold the key, you look around for a matching doorknob or padlock. Here we've got circumstantial evidence. Just a bit more, and this case is closed. We've got conclusive evidence. Irrefutable proof of the culprit's involvement. Here's the cult sigil. The token serves as proof of membership for a cult. Here's Duke, an ally. At the start of your turn, you may perform a trade action as if you were in any space within range. Here we've got the flux stabilizer. At the start of your turn, move a monster within range up to one space. We've got forensic evidence, proof of the victim's identification, and the gold key. The intricate etched pattern on the key's neck indicates it belongs to an equally fancy lock. Here we've got the grotesque stone, and there's actually one, two, three, four, five of these in the game. Thousands of years seem to be recorded in this statue's dim and greenish surface of unrecognizable stone. Here we've got the handcuffs. Action, you attempt to handcuff the suspect, Agility 2. If you pass, flip this card and give it to a, another investigator in your space. So this is if after the uh, investigator's been handcuffed, you struggle against the handcuffs to no effect, you will have to pick the lock. So that investigator cannot spend clues to convert dice results or perform additional puzzle steps. This card cannot be dropped or traded. As an action, they can attempt to pick the lock, which will require an observation test of, and get two successes. If you pass, you manage to escape your bonds, flip this card, any investigator in this space can perform this action. Here we've got incriminating evidence. You thought the man seemed suspicious, but here is the proof. We've got missing link. 
with this, everything falls into place. Here we've got the oil lamp, which is a light source. The flame produced by this lamp is so beautiful that you begin to wish you could see it everywhere you look. And here we've got the old journal. The journal entry in the culprit's own handwriting is practically a confession. Then we've got the old keys. The clinking of the keys echoes through the quiet night. You fear the sound might draw unwanted attention. And the photographic evidence, the proof can be seen clear as day. Puzzle box. The intricate pattern, se patterns seem to shift and change as you move the panels. You cannot imagine what prize awaits you. The ritual components, a collection of eerie objects to be used for some un or for some heinous ritual. Here we've got the rope action. You attempt to restrain the suspect, strength two. If you pass, flip this card and give it to another investigator in your space. So this is basically the handcuffs, again, just with rope, different tests. Uh, you struggle against your bonds, but the rope is too sturdy to break. You cannot move voluntarily this time. This card cannot be dropped or traded. You attempt to slip your bonds, agility two. If you pass, you manage to escape, flip this card. Any investigator in this space can perform this action. And finally, the silver key, Yog sothoth is the gate. Yog sothoth is the key and the guardian of the gate. And finally, let's take a look at the investigators and their special abilities. Here we've got Carson Sinclair, the butler. As an action, another investigator within range may perform one action. Activate this ability only once per round. Then we've got Preston Fairmont, the millionaire. Uh, once per round, when you gain an item, you may flip one horror face down or discard one horror. Here we've got Min T. Pan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The secretary. Once per round, you or another investigator within range may re-roll one die while resolving a test. That one I like a lot. We've got William York. This is a cool one. Whenever a monster is defeated, gain one clue. Notice that it's not when York defeats a monster. It's when any monster anywhere on the board is defeated. Agatha Crane, after you resolve a horror check, gain one clue. You don't even have to resolve it successfully. You just have to resolve it, you get a clue. Here we've got Wendy Adams, the urchin. You cannot become stunned or restrained. Rita Young, the athlete. You may move one additional space as part of your move action. And Father Mateo, as an action, another investigator within range becomes focused. Activate this ability only once per round. So there you have it, those are all the items, both unique and common, and all the investigators that come with Mansions of Madness Second Edition. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, at Board Offline. We've got a guild on Board Game Geek, and we have a giveaway going on at the time of this recording. So get over there to the guild and figure out how you can take part in that. And until next time, if you're bored online, board offline.